Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. So, I've got some sort of bad news. Uh, my marker appears to be dying out. Poor little guy. Not sure how much longer he'll be with us. Uh, you know that. You can see the grayness in, uh, in his stroke. Uh, but anyways, on to the subject of today's video. Um, two videos ago in my introduction to folding video, I mentioned that antiform and anticline and synform and syncline are not synonymous terms, right? And there's a very clear difference, although many times they will be used interchangeably, foolishly, including by myself. I think in that video I used Klein when I meant to say form uh, four times, I think the final count was. And you know, when I first started learning about synclines and anticlines, I, I just used the terms completely interchangeably. And it is that way for a reason, because most anticlines are antiforms, as we'll learn, and most synclines are synforms. But it's not always the case. So let's start by defining what an anticline and what a syncline is. I'm just drawing them side by side here. Put a little marker. So start over here. It's got an antiformal shape. A, B, C, and D. And then here we'll have the U shape. And we'll have A, B, C, and D. So right off the bat, you should be able to identify this one as an antiform and this one as a synform, right? However, when we're dealing with an anticline versus a syncline, um, it has to do with the relative age of the rock within the fold. So take the one on the left, for example. Just by using relative dating methods, such as the law of superposition, we can say that A is the youngest because it's on top, right? Followed by B, followed by C, and then D is the oldest, and that's important. An anticline is any fold in which the oldest rock is in the middle of the fold. So this one is an anticline. A syncline, it follows then, is any fold where the youngest rock is in the middle of the fold. So, you know, just by using our law of superposition again, A is above B is above C is above D. A is the oldest followed by B followed by C followed by D. So it gets progressively younger as you go towards the center of the fold. Easy enough, right? So, like I said, in many cases an anticline is going to be what's called an antiformal anticline, and a syncline is going to be what's called a synformal syncline. I mean, just by looking at this picture you can tell, yeah, it's an anticline and an antiform, and in this case it's a syncline and a synform, and this is the way it's going to be most of the time. However, as I've said a lot, in geology things don't work out in the ideal most of the time scenario. So, let's just imagine we've got an antiformal anticline to start with, right? We'll just draw a little 2D cross-sectional diagram over here. And then we've got a antiformal anticline, right? Label those similarly A, B, C, and D. And once again, just by relative dating, we can say D is the oldest, followed by C, followed by P, followed by A. So, antiformal anticline. Let's abbreviate that with anti, anti. However, and this goes into the topic of my last video, which was the symmetry of folds. When an antiform is deformed so much that it actually has been rotated more than 90 degrees, we don't refer to it as an antiform anymore. We refer to, say, we have an antiform that's been rotated at 110 degrees, so that it's flipped in this direction. We no longer refer to that as an antiform that's been rotated 110 degrees. We refer to that as a synform that's been rotated uh, 70 degrees, because antiform and synform are reflections of each other 180 degrees. So, let's just imagine something like this happens. Over time, we have a lot of deformation, more pressure being applied to this area, and we end up with 
something that looks like this. It actually gets rotated almost a full 180 degrees, and now D is here, B or C is here, and B is here, and A is down here. Well, right off the bat, you look at that and you say, well, that's a sin form. Ah, and it's a sin form, but it's not a syncline. Because recall from this that if this is just after one folding process has taken place, D must be older than the rest. So in this case, D is still older than the rest, and it's still in the middle. Therefore, it's a sinformal anticline. And that's how you can get something that isn't anticline but isn't antiformal. And if you just saw this, let's say you had no clue about the geologic history of this piece, if this piece wasn't given to you, then you could determine whether, it, well, you would know right off the bat it's sinformal, but you could determine whether it's syncline, a syncline or an anticline by simply using, say, radiometric dating to get the ages, the exact ages of these rock, and if D checks out to be the oldest, then you know that's an anticline, and that shows a history of a wildly large amount of uh, pressure being applied to this area, and multiple uh, episodes of it, too. Okay, uh, just, just because, I guess I'll give an example of a uh, syncline that undergoes a similar process. So, let's just say we have this... Uh, Syncline shape here. Oh, poor Marker is really not liking this. He wants me to just end the video. So we've got A, B, C, and D. And, you know, um, using relative dating, we can say that A is most likely older than B, C, and, or excuse me, younger than B, C, and D. And if we were to radiometric date, say we could get the exact amount. Um, but in this case, A is the youngest. So that is a sinformal syncline. However, once again, time passes by, subjected to a lot more pressure, say, and we end up with something like this. Now it's an antiform, and now D is up here, B is here, C is here, and A is here. It's an antiform. However, since A is still the youngest, you can change the positions of the rocks, but you can't change their age. A is still the youngest, and it's still in the middle, so it is a syncline, right? So effectively, if you have a, a given region of interest, and you know that it's a syncline or an anticline, that cannot be changed, no matter how much, well, unless you um, deform it so much that it's no longer a fold. Um, but assuming you're just applying more pressure and shifting the shape of the fold, then it's always going to be what it initially was, whether that's an anticline or a syncline. <clears throat> Excuse me, an anticline or a syncline. However, the shape of it, which we use the terms synform and antiform to describe, that can be altered, and that's the key difference between the two. So hopefully I cleared up some misconceptions. Anticline is almost always synonymous with antiform. However, you can't just use the terms carelessly and interchangeably because cases like these do um, exist where you actually will have an antiformal syncline or a sinformal anticline. But anyways, hopefully that was informative, otherwise good review. Hope you guys all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao!